I have here the beginnings of a contact form that's going to allow um, anyone who visits my Bubble app to send me uh, a message and Bubble's going to generate an email notification and that will arrive in my inbox. So let's build up the, um, the UI of the form to begin with. Um, so at the very least, uh, we're going to need an email address so we know who's sending us this message. Um, and uh, then we'll also take their name. And uh, then this is a good use for a multi-line input uh, for their message. And uh, we're going to set each of these to uh, mean that they cannot be left empty. And finally put a button in. Okay, so let's dive into building a workflow. But before we do that, um, just a few words about transactional emails. Um, we need to have a service that will enable our Bobble app to send emails. Um, and uh, this um, is slightly different to how you would send an email from a person to a person. We're talking now about a server, your Bobble app, sending an email to you. And uh, that's known as a, um, in most cases, that's known as a transactional email um, rather than a, a email or, um, sorry, a marketing email or a campaign email. So if you think of MailChimp, you use MailChimp to be able to send emails on your behalf, but in most cases, they're, um, they're like a campaign or marketing email and they're sent in bulk to a group of people. Transactional emails are emails that are uh, often uh, either immediately or shortly after sent based on an action that a user has taken. And um, Bubble has got a built-in integration with a provider called SendGrid. And you can, um, once you've added a domain name to your Bubble app, you can fill in uh, these two parts here in order to authenticate and to be able to send emails from your application to yourself in this instance via SendGrid. Um, and what a provider like SendGrid or Mailgun or Postmark, just to name another two, um, what they do is they help you configure your domain name by um, providing records that add to your domain name, to add to the DNS, that um, authenticate that this app has permission to send an email on your behalf under your brand identity, under your domain name. Um, and if you don't have those things in place, for example, um, Bobble does still let you send emails, but it, it's more like from like a pooled email address. Um, so it's lacking your branding and it's lacking these additional checks to say this email is sent under the authority of this domain name. Um, and so it's more like to end up in spam and fail to be delivered. So it is quite important to get this bit right to whether you're using SendGrid, Mailgun, uh, Postmark, that you set up your domain name correctly because if you're going to send an email from uh, an email address at like at, so like website at your domain name and you haven't got these steps in place to authenticate sending that email from the server, it is likely to end up in spam and you might end up building a, a bad reputation um, around uh, emails coming from that address. So let's assume that you have filled this in and that we're using SendGrid um, because that allows you, we need to go to our button, uh, start workflow because that allows you to use this built-in menu. If you're using a different email provider, again, Mailgun, Postmark, I've used both of them in the past, they're very good. Um, you'll find them under plugins because you'll have to set up your own um, API integration uh, and um, and you know, work that out yourself using the um, plugin uh, Bubbles API connector. But if we're using SendGrid and we've got that API key, we can use uh, send email here. And so, this one is uh, going to be sent. You would put your own address in here because you want to receive the notification when someone submits this form. Um, we can specify a reply to address. So this is not the address that, that the message is coming from, this notification. It is if in our email client we hit reply, who does that go to? And so it would make sense in most cases to put in the um, message sender's email address in here. Uh, send a name we'll, we'll leave blank and I'll comment on that in a moment. Um, but then we'll just put in contact form submission. 
and uh, we can fill this out with name and then uh, from our input field and if you haven't um, worked out this little quirk in the bobble editor yet um, I'm not actually my cursor isn't actually on a new line here I have to add in what looks like an extra line um, uh, it's just a quirk when you're using dynamic data see there we go it, it gets rid of one of those lines um, so I want these to appear on new lines and then I'm going to put in two new lines message There we go. Okay, so this will, if, assuming I have entered my email address here, this will send an email from um, an identity to do with my domain name that I've authorized through my transactional email provider like SendGrid with this subject and this email content. But if I was to hit reply to it, um, it would I would uh, be able to send a message directly back to the email address that has been entered here. But it's important to make your email um, uh, not lose authenticity, not not run a chance of being put into spam, it's important that this the identifier of the sender of this notification email is your bubble app. It's going to be like app at your domain name, for example. And so, uh, when filling in these fields, it's important not to pretend to be sending an email on behalf of the person who's filled in the form because you don't have the authority or the right to pretend to send an email from their email address. So the, the sender of this email, because it is a notification, is your bubble app, is an address that you've set up through your transactional email provider. Um, but by using the reply to field, you can just as easily hit reply in your email client and send an email back to the person who submitted this form.